Hey guys, this is the Random Zombie Slayer, and this is the Nuketown High Round Strategy Guys on Black Ops 2. So the first thing that you want to go do is go buy the M14, which you really don't have to do that, but you just want to have it so that it's ready to go once you're out of pistol ammo. So the second thing that you want to do is you're going to want to locate every single perk that drops out of the sky so you know exactly where it's at. So I already know that the Quick Revive is going to land in that little that little space and the uh, the greenhouse, the little garage thing, I don't know what else to call it, I think it's a garage. Then after you do that you want to go run around like every single other map. If you haven't seen my other videos on high round strategy guys, go check them out because the beginnings are pretty similar between every single map. But on this map you pretty much just go around, shoot them in the leg eight times and then and the knife on the maximize your points to the fullest. And then right here, since I only have eight bullets and there's two zombies, I have to knife two at a time. I mean, shoot two at a time. Okay, so on round two, you're gonna want to go run and buy a quick revive. Which um, my location was in the garage. Your location's probably not gonna be the same, but just watch the nuke as it comes down. So pretty much just run around, find the zombies, shoot them once in the chest, and then knife them with the M14. Try to get as many points as you can, because hopefully you want to try to get Juggernaut as your second perk. So, because you want to have enough for whatever drops next. Unless it's Pack-a-Punch. If it's Pack-a-Punch second, then you can't really, you really don't want to use Pack-a-Punch right away. So just run around, keep killing zombies. And Nuketown is one of the the way well, it's not it's not that hard of a map, but it's it's a lot harder map. I'd say it's a little harder in farm simply because the perks don't don't like drop in the same order. Like farm they they just give you the perks. They don't they don't like drop out of the sky and just hope for the best on what you get, but a nuketown pretty much if you don't get juggernaut on your second or third perk that drops then you're pretty much screwed and you have to pretty much restart the game which you don't have to restart the game but if you're playing solo it, you kinda need to because if not I tried doing it where juggernaut was like the fourth perk that dropped or yeah it was fourth perk and it, did, it didn't go very well I only got to like round nine because you pretty much need juggernaut on this map simply because of how crazy the training is. So, oh and right here, since I have some pistol ammo, I know it takes two full mags to the leg to correspond to two bullets with an M14. So pretty much I'm just maximizing my points to the fullest by getting 160 points for the pistol ammo and then another 130 for every kill. And then right here, I don't know what happened, I, I saw that I knifed him, and he just didn't die. So, whatever. Oh, and my second perk was Juggernaut. Okay, you guys didn't see the nuke drop, because I cut that out, but the, the nuke did drop in the Yellow House backyard, so you want to know wherever your nuke drops, because so sometimes it can be in the greenhouse backyard, or the yellow house upstairs, or the yellow house backyard. But... And then, since my next perk was Juggernaut, I had to go buy back Quick Revive, and now I'll get three hits of the chest, three hits of the chest knife, and now I have enough for Juggernaut. So we're already up and rolling by round four because Juggernaut is a much needed perk and it'll be much easier to keep, can you know, get them zombie kill them going. And another thing about this map, that that little door right there is pretty much I pretty much use it if I ever need a like max ammo or something like that because you really don't want to waste it on a double points or something like an insta kill. Or if like, I could see you use it for a fire cell because if like, nobody really has like, 
let's say let's say a lot of people go down and they and they need like some some weapons because when, whenever you go down and restart you only get like 1500 points and that's not enough to go buy a lot of weapons so the fire cell could really help out with that so pretty much if if you're playing on multiplayer you use it for like a fire cell or max ammo but if you're playing on solo just pretty much use it for max ammo only because you really don't need all the other stuff And then since I have enough to go find the mystery box, I'm going to go in the greenhouse backyard and then go hit hit the box for well, pretty much whatever I get. I want to try to get something that's fully auto. Ooh, like I did. I got the M27. M27 is my favorite gun in Nuketown simply because it just pretty much just destroys the zombies. I, I don't know. The feel of the gun is just much better. And then the teddy bear location. And right there, how I did that little spin, I that you're probably like, well, he's running away from that one zombie with a whip. But no, I was pretty much checking to make sure that there was no zombie behind me by spinning to see if there was behind me. Because one thing with zombies is you don't want to be shooting at a zombie right in front of you and getting hit from behind. Because that's one of the main ways to go down or pretty much get pinned, which, which causes going down. <laughs> And then pretty much right here, I'm just shooting their heads off, and I see a max ammo, so I'm not really worried about my ammo, so I'm just pretty much going going crazy on them. Chuck my grenades in this door. See where this guy's at. There he is. And since the guy, I know the guy's not going to get here in time, the last guy, I'm just going to get the max ammo anyways. Pretty much, Nuketown is just going with the flow of things because nothing's guaranteed, nothing's predetermined. Well, it, it's predetermined, but nothing's like really guaranteed. There's no guarantee you're gonna get a jug right away. There's no guarantee you're gonna get like double tap right away or you're on your third perk or any of that. The only thing that's guaranteed is that quick revive is gonna drop first. Doesn't there's no guarantee where it's gonna drop, but it's guaranteed to drop first. So pretty much you just gotta you just gotta improvise with what you get. Because I know without jug on your second or third perk you're pretty much screwed on this map on solo because I've never I've never been able to hold off or be able to train safely enough without going down. So right there, once I had three thousand points and I and I had good I had good um I had a good weapon from the mystery box. I got a jug. I got a quick revive. I got pretty much what I need. So I need the stuff from the from the inside of the map. So once I had three thousand, I went to the inside and purchased that little the clear the debris. So right here, I have some pistol ammo. And like all of my other strategy guys, I tell you guys to maximize your points with your pistol because. If you shoot them in the chest area or or the crotch area, whatever you want to call it, then you can pretty much just keep shooting them there, and you will get like a ton of points because the pistol gets ten points per per zombie it hits, and it hits three zombies for every bullet. And there's eight bullets that is shooting per clip, so that that's a lot of points. Because right now I want to get Galvin Knuckles so I can just run around and keep punching them and not have to worry about using my ammo to kill the zombies. So right here, someone drops an insta kill. Now I could have either A, turned around and shoot him with my N27, B, got the insta kill and then shoot him with my N27, or C, do what I'm doing now, get the insta kill and, and kind of walk forward, walk back while knifing them so that I don't get stuck in the pile of zombies. Because right there, you get 140 per knife because that's the kill gives you the hit marker for the knife too. So since you get 140, then I know I can get um, Galva Knuckles because I maximize my points to the fullest. See, I mean, zombies is pretty much just thinking about the best solution, the best way to get through things like like you gotta think ahead, you gotta think about what can benefit you the most, what can get you the farthest, who can get you the farthest with who you're playing. Like some sometimes you sometimes just you don't have to play with good people because 
But if you really want to go for a high round and you really want to get it done, then go with good people. But sometimes just play with like your normal friend, just to have fun. And right there, there's another nuke. I see it's going to be in some kind of backyard. It's not the backyard I'm in now. So I am pretty sure that right now I'm going to go check it out. Because I know where it's at, I located it, and that, that's one of the main things you need to do in Nuketown, is locate where the nuke is going. Now, there's one more guy left, I know where he's at, he's coming, he's coming out that door, there he is. I'm gonna go check it out what it was. Now, it could either be Pack-A-Punch, Double Tap, or Speed Cola, which, since it's in theater mode, and I've already played this, I know that it's already pack a punch so since this pack a punch i know i could upgrade my mustang not my mustang and sally my m my m1911 to mustang and sally and i can keep um i could have a good gun to use with punching the zombies at the same time so since i don't have enough for it i'm gonna buy a claymores because just in case i get in a bad situation claymores would be able to get me out of it because claymores is a one hit kill to realms i don't really know what realms probably like 20 or something i just know claymores are really powerful so yeah, after i punch them all out this round i now have enough to pack a punch so i'm gonna go run straight to that pack a punch machine and pack a punch my m1911 to get mustang and sally and get the zombie train rolling. I guess you're probably wondering why I opened up that, that door. It's simply because that door is much easier to get through because there's much more training space to get through. Now right here, I knew this guy was gonna pin me in, but but I knew I had Calvin Knuckles, so I wasn't really worried about zombies pinning me in because I could just punch my way through. But what I mean is that room it, ha it has a lot more training space. So if I if I need to, I can I can train them out of the out of the way of the door and then get to the door. While the the very back door to the yellow house is just simply like very little training space. Now right here, I'm pretty sure this is where another perk drops. And like always. Like always, this is a rinse and repeat method. You just want to keep keep repeating what you're doing by punching the zombies, or if you're if you're deciding to train the zombies because punching them is getting a little too hectic. Then keep punching the zombies, and then once a perk drops, you want to look up like really quick. You don't want to look up forever, but you want to be able to locate it enough. So it's double tap. It went straight forward. Got it. Went back to zombies. Went back to what I'm doing. And I'm gonna keep hitting the box for a monkey. Now, Nuketown, you don't really need the ray gun. You can use whatever gun you want. Because the ray gun's not really necessary. Like, um, right here I'm about to show you, show you a good example of this. Because I have the M27, I get a ray gun, I don't take it. I don't want, I didn't want the ray gun. I wasn't looking for a ray gun in this map. I'm looking for monkeys because I need monkeys to, if I ever get in a sticky situation, but ray gun, I don't really need it. So I'd rather have the M27. And right here, the next round, I, I eventually get the monkeys and I am good to go. I can just keep training, keep going after I get um, sleight of hand, which is speed cola, I just call it sleight of hand just because pretty much is. Uh, once I get sleight of hand, then we will be fully fully ready, fully set up. Once I run out of the N27 ammo, I can pack a punch it, get get killing zombies much faster, and we can just keep rolling. So right here, I see the nuke is gonna be somewhere at the yellow house, so I run to the yellow house, and I see it's still coming down, and I know that it's in the top floor, just simply because of where the, the little earthquake thingy was. I don't know what you wanna call it. I think it's like dust of debris when it comes down. But it's right here, speed hole is here. I take it, drink it, Gargle that thing down and then run back to what I'm doing. Cause you, you and and zombies, you got to keep them one consistent flow unless you're hitting the mystery box. Because you you, you just need to keep things going. Cause once you once you stop in Nuketown, you're pretty much done. There, there's really nothing you can really do. Cause Nuketown is not a hard map to just be standing around. I would know on this game because my death was actually 
throwing monkeys and just letting the monkeys do all the work. And I was just standing there, and mon- and zombies that were spawning behind me uh, made it so I couldn't turn around. And then the monkeys that were right in front of me that had zombies in front of me, the zombies turned around and then pinned me in, and then I was done. Because I went down, got right back up, and the zombies... And the zombies came right back. There wasn't enough room to get out, so I eventually, eventually went down by that. So this is um, this is pretty much just a quick example of how to train. Once on this map, you just pretty much run in a circle, or you could do like a half circle. Which you don't know where half circle is. Pretty much how it is in the um, if you ever played Kino Der Ton on the original Black Ops, it's pretty much burning the one side to the room to the next, to the one side of the room to the next. So what I mean is, like, let's take those trash cans and that bush right there. Run into this bush. Run to this side where the trash cans are at. And then, and then you want to go wide to where that, that little destroyed, that little destroyed piece right there. To the right of me is that. Uh, right here, get a nuke. And, and you're probably like, well, why aren't you getting the nuke? Get the nuke, man. Get it. It's right there. Take it. But I'm just like, nope, because I want the zombies to come in first. Because whenever you go get a nuke, unless you're going for points, and then you want to wait till all the zombies are there. So, this has been the conclusion of my video. I hope you guys like it. It's uh, Black Ops 2 Nuke Town High Round Strategy Guide Zombies. And if you guys like that video, please make sure to smash that like button. Link in the description for my Facebook and Twitter. And if you guys want more zombie videos and tutorials and gameplays by me, then please subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family, get them all involved in this, in this shiznit. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.